thank you, thank you everybody for, for joining in for this, this, this talk. Um, so I'm going to be speaking about some work which I've been doing with my collaborator uh, Owen Maiden, who is another open force field researcher. Um, and, and we've been really trying to do a, a data-driven study to try and elucidate which types of physical properties should we be optimizing the non-bonded van der Waals interaction parameters of our force fields against to yield the largest improvements in terms of force field uh, performance. So to begin, I just wanted to give a, an update on, on the infrastructure, which is not only going to allow us to do this study, um, but to do many studies like it, um, because we're at a really quite exciting point where we can now almost routinely refit the non-bonded interaction parameters of our force fields against even larger data sets of, of, of physical property data. And this is really made possible with, by this, this seamless integration between uh, force balance, which is our fantastic optimization engine created by Li Ping Wang and his group at, at UC Davis, and the OpenFF Evaluator Framework, which I've built as a, an automatic scalable framework for estimating data sets of physical properties from molecular simulation, as well as their gradients, uh, which force balance can then consume to, to take informed optimization steps, leading to, with almost no human intervention, um, these, these nice refit force fields. Um, additionally, in addition to just having this, this refitting pipeline, we can now routinely take our refit force fields and then use the evaluator framework to benchmark them against, again, large test sets of, of physical property data, gain insights into where the limitations in our force fields may be, um, and then take those insights and learn and make data-driven decisions based off them to decide what changes might be needed to make to our, our, our force field functional model, Maybe we don't have enough chemical environment types in the right area. Maybe our, our training data set is, is deficient in certain areas, but we can now do these kind of cyclical, self-consistent optimization epochs uh, without almost no human intervention, with the only human intervention really being required to choose the, the training and, and the test sets. But even that we're working to, to automate. And so the study that I'm going to talk about now is really the first major study that we've done using this, this automated uh, fitting infrastructure. And so we've been trying to determine which types of physical properties are most informative to train the van der Waals non-bonded uh, parameters of our force fields against. So historically, most force fields have taken the approach to train their non-bonded van der Waals parameters against only pure properties. So pure liquid densities to try and get information about the relative sizes of the molecules, uh, pure entropies of vaporization to try and get some, some information about the cohesiveness between, between energies. Um, but, but while pure densities are kind of routine to train against, and entropies of vaporization are, 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 are challenging for two really main reasons. Um, for one, it is really, really difficult to find diverse and especially accurate data sets of entropy of vaporization measurements, especially data sets which are permissively licensed and, and open for us to use. So there's not much data to train against. And actually in terms of calculating these properties, we know that our fixed, for, uh, our fixed charge force fields can't actually or can't at all capture the change in polarization when a molecule goes, goes from the liquid uh, to the gas phase. So if we're training against this, we have to either hope that this, this contribution from the change in polarization is small, but if it's not, we're essentially building electrostatic contributions into our van der Waals parameters, which we don't want, or we have to try and correct for this. Um, but this is just another potential source of, of error into our calculations. So we as a consortium have been really interested in, in a, a, maybe moving away from pure properties, or maybe at least um, finding properties which are complementary to them, especially uh, mixture properties, properties of, of systems of mixtures, especially entropies of mixing, binary entropies of mixing as a potentially better replacement for entropy of vaporization as it doesn't have these limitations and also binary mass densities of liquids either to complement or possibly replace uh, these pure, pure liquid densities. And, and we're excited about these properties for a couple of, a couple of key reasons. For one, there is a significant amount of mixture data to available to us. There's hundreds and thousands of these mixed properties available in the NIST ThermoML archive of, of thermophysical properties, which we can automatically uh, pull down and curate in, in machine readable uh, formats. Um, we think machine mixture properties with mixed properties, it should also be easier to build training sets which are targeted towards reproducing well uh, specific interactions in an almost modular way. 
Uh, consider if you want to capture, say, alcohol ketone interactions with mixture properties, all you'd have to do is find a mixture where one component is an alcohol, the other component is a ketone, and on mixing, you then capture this interaction. Whereas with pure properties, you're going to have to find these weird molecules which contain more and more uh, different functionalities. So it's, so it's a lot more difficult there. And I think one of the big potential benefits, um, and this is mainly just a hypothesis at the moment, but we think possibly improving on these mixture properties, especially entropy of mixing, may correlate with also improving our performance at uh, predicting things like binding free energies, solvation free energies, partition coefficients, things which rely on a lot of different interactions between components, which, which entropy of mixing will, will inform us about. So to, to kind of investigate this problem, the approach we took is to take the open force field 1.0.0, essentially the first parsley force field, and then refit a select number of its van der Waals parameters against different, com against essentially four different training sets, where each training set contains a different set of combinations of the properties that I just mentioned. So one containing only those pure properties is kind of a, a historical baseline, one containing only those mixed properties, which, which I spoke about of, of being of interest, but also then combinations of these pure and mixed properties with the, with the idea that we're not quite sure if mixed properties are enough to constrain things sufficiently, i.e. maybe we train on mixed properties and improve mixed properties, but at the expense of making pure properties worse. So we want to also see, you know, do we need to include pure properties to make sure things are kind of consistently uh, constrained? Uh, for each of these trading sets, we just focused on a, on a limited set of functionalities for which we had the most diverse data available to us. So sets of alcohols, acids, esters, ethers, ketones, and, and alkenes. But with the hope that any results gained from this study on this functionality set um, should continue to generalize as we move to broader, more diverse uh, training and test sets like would be required for when we try and refit for, for SAGE later in, in, in the year. So in order to do essentially these four unique optimizations, um, we need to build both a pure training set and a, and a mixture training set. And then for those training sets, which contain, contained a, a combination of both types of properties, we could just combine these two distinct sets in different ways. But essentially the pure training set that we constructed had a total of about 56 pure data points, um, an even mixture of pure liquid densities and, and pure entropies of vaporization, all the kind of ambient conditions, but for a diverse range of, of, of different components exhibiting the, the functionalities of interest. For the mixture set, this contained about 200 data points total, um, so about an even split of entropy of mixing data points and, and binary uh, mass density measurements, um, where each of these components was, was the mixtures in the set. And for each of these mixtures, we tried to choose uh, data points for three different compositions, three different mole fractions for each mixture at 25%, 50%, and 75% and composition, again, again at ambient conditions. Um, I think one of the main goals in trying to build this mixture training set is we not only wanted to get a diverse set of molecules, but we really wanted to select uh, mixtures which um, exhibited behavior all the way down from almost no deviation from ideality, i.e. where these mixture properties are mainly determined by the properties of the pure components themselves, all the way up to large deviations from ideality, where in the mixture there's new interactions which weren't necessarily present in, in the pure components. Such would be the case in, say, alcohol and esters, where esters themselves can't form hydrogen bonds, but they can, can with alcohols. And it's this region of, of, of large deviations from ideality that we think training against these mixed properties are, are potentially going to be the most informative. So then for each of these four training sets that we built containing these four different combinations of properties, we did our optimizations using our automated fitting infrastructure. And here I'm showing the objective function of the fit as a function of the optimization iteration. And one can see that for all four of these, um, the objective function uh, decreased almost immediately by a function a factor of about two to threefold. Um, so it does definitely seem like our optimization is pushing things in the right direction. Um, one can also look at the RMSCs of the different properties at the beginning and the end of the optimization, and almost universally across the board, things, things improved, um, with the exception of maybe one outlier, of which I don't necessarily want to go into in, in, in this talk. Um, so the question then is, how well do these results generalize to, to broader, broader test sets of, of, of molecules? Um, so to, to kind of 
test the generalization, um, we built a significantly larger benchmarking set than the training set. It contained about a thousand uh, total uh, data points. Uh, it contained, again, uh, pure liquid densities, pure entropies of vaporization for all of those different functionalities that we were training against. It contained a significant amount of mixture data points, so entropies of mixing, binary mass densities again, but also we included binary excess molar volumes just to make sure we're getting the difference between the pure and, and binary densities, hopefully, hopefully correct. And again, for each mixture included, we looked at three different compositions and, and kind of ambient conditions. I think the main deviation here between the test and the training set for the mixture properties, as well as for the, the, the mixture training set, um, we only included, say, alcohol alkane, um, alcohol ester, uh, ketone ether, alkane uh, ether, and alcohol acid uh, mixtures. But in the test set, we tried to contain all different permutation pairs of these different functionalities, including things like alcohol alcohol, uh, ether, um, uh, uh, ester, even though we didn't necessarily train against them, just to ensure things were, were, were generalizing. Um, so we did, the, we did the benchmarking, we spun up our, our automated benchmarking infrastructure. Um, here is the, the results of that. So here I'm showing the root mean squared error of each of the different properties that we were benchmarking against, where each of these colored bars represents the, the results of benchmarking uh, this property against uh, this force field, uh, which was optimized against this, this kind of unique combination of, of, of properties where this red bar was a benchmark done upon the initial uh, OpenFF 1.0.0 uh, force field as kind of a, a benchmark uh, baseline. So any improvements relative to this red bar means, means things got better, essentially. So what we can see from this is that almost universally um, across the board, things did improve regardless of the types of properties that we were, we were optimizing against. Um, but, but looking at this a bit more particular, so this, this, this far right bar, um, which I believe is light blue, um, was uh, a benchmark done against the force field optimized against the, only the pure properties. So one did see some improvement in the pure properties. Um, these are 95% confidence intervals, um, but so we, we can't really say they improved too much because there's no statistical significant improvement here um, when training against only the pure properties. Um, we did see improvement in, in, the, in the binary mass density, um, but we saw almost uh, you know, no significant improvement in the entropies of mixing and actually a significant degradation in the excess molar volumes. Um, and again, you know, going back to what I was saying at the start, we, we were hoping and we kind of wanted to see improvements in entropy of mixing because we think this is going to be correlated with those, those properties more of interest. So compare that to these first three bars, which were benchmarks done against uh, force fields optimized against the mixed properties. We do see significant improvements to the mixed properties, even though we were benchmarking on you know, different type of interactions that we didn't necessarily train against. We do see significant improvements to the binary mass densities, and we don't necessarily see at least improvements, but we don't see degradation at least um, of the, the binary excess molar volumes. But I think one of the key things that we do see is actually if we look at their performance of predicting the pure properties, at least, uh, again, not too much significance here, probably due to the small size of, of the pure property benchmark set, but we don't degrade um, by only training on mixed properties, we don't uh, degrade their ability to predict the prop uh, pure properties. So it does seem like we can get away with only optimizing against mixed properties without necessarily having to worry too much about things being, being under constrained. And again, just to highlight the reason why we think we should be quite excited about these improvements in entropy of mixing is because, and we're, we're testing this hypothesis now, but we hope improvements here should correlate well onto some of those other mixture-like properties which are, which are the most of, of, of interest to us. So one can also look at the R squared. So here, exactly the same kind of plot, but now on the y-axis, we've got the R, R squared um, and not too much extra information here. And the only main takeaway is actually when we benchmark the entropy of mixing against the force field optimized against the mixed properties, we did see significant improvement, uh, a, a significant improvement in the correlation of, of these properties. Um, and we can dig into that just a little bit deeper. So here on the x-axis, I'm showing the estimated values of the, entropy, the binary entropy of mixing for each of the different force fields that were benchmarked against. On the y-axis, the, the experimental value for the binary entropy of mixing. Um, and if we look at this leftmost plot, which was the benchmark done uh, uh, upon the OpenFF 1.0.0 force field, we see these large clusters where there's a significant systematic error in certain um, 
mixtures of, of, of functional groups, where each of these colored groups, uh, colored dots represents a, a different mixture of different functional groups. So especially alcohol and esters, alcohol and ketones, and, and possibly even alcohol and alcohols were poorly represented in, in the initial starting point. And if we look at this end plot, which was the benchmark done when we'd only retrained on the pure properties, um, we really don't see any help in, in improving the systematic error, or at least not much. But compared against when we are optimized against the mixed properties, perhaps, perhaps not too surprisingly, um, the systematic error almost completely, completely went away. And the reason why I'm highlighting these orange, green and red dots in particular is because these are mixtures which show significant deviation from ideality, i.e. there is interactions present in the mixture, not there in the pure. So including these mixed properties, optimizing against these mixed properties do seem really important for capturing those deviations from ideality. And we do think this should help improve our force fields uh, significantly. So just to wrap up quickly then, um, I really want to emphasize again, we, we've got down with this fantastic automated thrifting infrastructure, both on the QM side, which I've not shown here, but also on, on the non-bonded side. Um, these kind of studies would have been so laborious and human intensive previously, but now we can do them almost effortlessly, where most of the human time just goes into building the training and, and the testing sets. So this infrastructure is allowing us to do data-driven studies into force field science. We're now she's seeing from these studies that actually mixture properties do seem to be a good target to head towards for future force field optimizations, especially it seems like we can replace this problematic entropy of mix uh, entropy of vaporization with our entropy of mixing measurements um, and not degrade but actually hopefully gain performance. And the, the, the last thing and the kind of missing piece of the puzzle, which unfortunately the calculations haven't finished in time. Um, but we're now doing these benchmarks against uh, host, we're expanding the benchmarks to include a host guest binding affinity to really try and test this hypothesis that improving uh, these mixed properties in particular, entropy of mixing do lead to improvements in these host guest binding affinities and, and other mixture like properties of interest. Uh, but we should be sharing those results in the next couple of weeks. Um, so as everything that we do in the consortium, all of the input analysis scripts for the studies on GitHub, uh, the frameworks that we used are available on GitHub. Um, and just to finish off, I'd again like to thank my collaborator, Owen Maiden, for his, his help on this project, um, for Li Ping Wang for his substantial efforts in helping to integrate, integrate Evaluator into Force Balance, and also uh, Christopher Bailey from OpenEye, who has given such a, a significant insight into uh, helping to design, design and, and analyze this study. And then of course, everyone for, for their attention. Um, so, so thank you so much, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer those now. Uh, hi, Simon. This, this is Jamshed. Hi, Jamshed. Um, really good stuff. <laughs> nice to see you again. Um, <laughs> I, I was just thinking, uh, uh, out of this, there's a, a really good scientific question that uh, could come out relatively easily. Uh, and that is that, you know, the potential functions, particularly with the Van, Van der Waals uh, parameters, we, we, the, the parameters, I, I guess, originally were optimized on pure systems. And then we have these built-in Lorentz path lot mixing rules. Now, you know, I'm not quite certain what the history is of the mixing rules. I, I've intended to look into them at some stage, but I've never really done that. But there is a, a good... Uh, uh, rationale for them or whether they are empirical. Now, what what this work could, in, in fact, is to do, actually determine what the limits of those mixing rules are. So if you did actually focus on the pure properties uh, and then uh, see how well we are able to reproduce the mixing data. Um, so my point is that one, one there's, there's two routes here. One is to of course, to optimize the Van der Waals parameters themselves. And the other thing is, or, or maybe one could do both. And the other thing is actually focus on the mixing rules too, that one could perhaps either derive a better mixing rule, because those at the moment, I think those two are also parameters. Yeah, so, so I, I think you're absolutely spot on with this. And, and, and this is an absolutely fundamental issue that we want to look into in the future. Um, like you say, we, we know these, these uh, mixing rules have been chosen historically. Um, I think the, the the mixing rule for the the the, the sigma parameter was chosen um, based on hard spheres, um, and I think the epsilon uh, mixing rule parameter was somewhat 
chosen to reproduce effects of electronegativity. Um, but we, we, as a consortium, we definitely want to look into this and explore um, what mixing rules we should be using and, and, and what impact they have. Um, so like you say, we could potentially do a, a study such as this to explore the question, um, and that is definitely an avenue. Um, but we're also looking at um, more quantitatively rigorous approaches to also study this. Uh, so on Friday, my, my colleague Owen Maiden is going to be speaking about um, Bayesian methods to try and quantify, um, uh, to, to kind of put a number on, you know, what, what's the performance of these of these different mixing rules and, and, and other various aspects of the force field um, for a given data set. Um, so that's also a, a potential study and, and route that we're, we're looking into, although that one's a bit, bit further off. Thank you. So have you, um, do you have thoughts yet on um, places where it looks like you especially will need to couple charge fitting into this, like as, as BCC fitting comes online, or is that um, a little too far ahead to see yet? Yeah, I mentioned when we did the optimization, and actually we saw this this in the benchmarking study. Um, when we kind of split up um, the performance into you know wh what kind of environments were there, um, almost universally across the board, we saw that the performance of predicting ketones density, either binary density where their ketones were in excess, or pure density where ketones were just on themselves, um, almost universally degraded, um, and it was ju it was just ketones. Uh, so we think this may be linked to um, maybe the van der Waals having to uh, accommodate and, 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 and kind of correct for uh, deficiencies in, in the charge schemes there. So I think this is one of the avenues where we think this might be, might be important, um, but we're still in the early stages of looking into that. Great, thanks. Um, 